in this Double One Game Creative Video Tutorial series, we'll be looking at the many different types of resources that make up your games, providing a step-by-step -step breakdown on what each of them does and how they can be used to bring your games to life. In this third part, we'll be taking a look at tilesets, providing an overview of the tileset editor itself, as well as learning the differences between ground, lower object, upper object, and wall tiles. When designing maps in Double One Game Creator, you'll likely use tilesets to lay the foundation of your world. Sprites can also be used as a means of getting images into your game, but using them excessively can negatively impact your game's frame rate. Unlike tilesets, which are much more performance efficient. Tilesets can only be placed on maps and are confined to a grid. They're also divided into four distinct layers, floors or ground, lower objects, upper objects, and walls. Floor tiles are displayed beneath the player and have a flat, thin collision that cannot be modified. They're also used for the roofs of wall tiles. Lower objects are placed directly on top of floor tiles. They can be rendered in numerous ways, such as lying flat so that the player can walk over them, like a rug, or standing tall so that the player can walk behind them, like a tree or table. Lower objects also have modifiable collision boxes to stop the player from being able to walk through them. Upper objects are placed directly on top of lower objects and walls. They share all of the same properties as lower objects, with the one exception being that they don't have any collision. These can be used to hang paintings on wall tiles or place small decorative items on top of lower objects, like a lamp on top of a bedside table. Lastly, walls are like boundaries that the player cannot pass. They consist of a wall graphic, which is used for the side of the wall, and a roof graphic, a floor tile that sits on top of it. Walls are commonly used to construct buildings or platforms in platform games. Wall tiles also fill an entire tile space, a 32x32x32 32 by 32 by 32 pixel area, and can be multiple tiles tall. Now let's take a look at the tileset editor itself. First, open the tileset editor by clicking on the tilesets button on the main toolbar. To the left of the window, you'll see a tree view list which shows you all of the tilesets that are in your project. These tilesets will be different depending on which template you're using. For the purposes of this video tutorial, we'll be using the Action RPG template. Directly above this list is a set of buttons which can be used to add, remove, manage, and export your tilesets. Before we create a new tileset, let's briefly go over each of the sections of the tileset editor. In the top left, you can set the tilesets name, layer, and edit its material. The material editor provides settings to adjust how a tile will behave under different lighting. You can also set a name for your selected tile, disable its lighting, specify whether both the top and bottom of the tile should be rendered for 3D games, and set how far the player will submerge when coming in contact with the tile. The terraformation graphics section is used to set up smooth transitions between different tiles that are besides each other. We'll be covering tile terraformation more extensively in the next part of our video tutorial series. The variability section is used to randomly change how a tile appears in game, such as its position, color, or rotation. You can use this to effortlessly change the look and feel of your tile sets without needing to create entirely new ones. The style option is used to change how the tile set will behave in Double One Game Creator. Flipping is set by default and allows tiles to be flipped horizontally and vertically. Rotating changes the behavior of the flipping map tools to allow tiles to be rotated in 90 degree increments instead. Expanded removes the functionality of flipping or rotating, but doubles the size of the tile set, going from 64 tiles to 256 tiles. The advanced mapping option can be used to add an optional normal map, which will add depth when combined with lights. The smooth scaling of tiles option applies anti-aliasing to your tile set to smooth the edges when scaled, while the keep resource in memory option ensures the tile set remains in active memory. The display as square in map editor option turns the entire tile set into a tiny square image inside the map's tile set picker. This option makes no difference to how the tiles are displayed in game. Edit compression is used to compress the size of your tile sets so that they take up less space, as well as where you can enable padding, which spaces out the rendering of tiles by a single pixel to prevent the edges of neighboring tiles from being picked up. Enabling this option will help fix rendering issues in HTML5 games. 
The remaining settings include the tileset extractor and animation tools, which we'll be going over in the next part of our video tutorial series. With all of that explanation out of the way, let's create some tilesets. We'll start by creating a ground tileset. To create a new tileset, click on the Add Resource button. By default, the layer property will be set to ground, which is what we want, so we don't need to change this. To place an image inside a tile, you can either right click the tile directly, or left click the editable selection box to the left. You can select Edit from the drop down menu to open the built in graphics editor and draw your own tiles, or you can select Replace and insert a graphic that's already stored on your computer. You can also select multiple tiles at once by clicking and dragging inside the tileset window. This is useful for inserting graphics that span across multiple tiles, as you can import them all in one go. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to a file containing all of the tiles we'll be using in this video tutorial. Download the file to somewhere appropriate on your computer, and then return to Double One Game Creator. Click inside the editable selection box to the left, and select Replace from the drop-down menu. Then double-click dirtbase.png from inside the ground folder. While each tile is 32 by 32 pixels, you can actually insert a graphic that's larger than these dimensions. This allows you to create HD tile sets, which ensures that the tile set will remain sharp even when it's scaled or the map zoomed in, especially in 3D maps. You can also insert graphics that are smaller too. We'd recommend naming your tiles whenever possible so that they can be referenced in scripting. And that's it. Once saved, your new tile set should appear inside the tile set picker in the map editor. You can then select your dirt tile and begin painting it on your map using the drawing tools to the right. Next up are lower objects. These will make up the bulk of your environments and scenery. Click on the Add Resource button to create a new tile set and then change the layer to Lower Object. Next, click on the Editable Selection box and select Replace like we did before. Then double click BarrelLow.png from the Lower Objects folder. You can insert larger graphics into a single 32x32 32 32 pixel tile and have it span multiple tiles when placed on a map. This is useful for stacking or overlapping lower objects with other lower objects. A good example of this can be found inside the environment tile set. Notice how the trees only take up a single 32x32 32 32 pixel tile. If you select one of them and look towards the editable selection box, you can see that they're actually much larger. This ensures that the trees can overlap each other on a map allowing you to create dense forests with ease. Moving back to our own lower object tile set, you'll notice that some of the options to the left have changed from when we created our ground tile set. Let's go over what each of them does. The tile shape option is used to change how the tile will render on a map. Flat below shadows will render the tile flat against ground tiles, with shadows rendering on top of it, like a rug for example. Flat above shadows is similar except shadows will render beneath it, like a hole in the ground. Tall will render the tile upright, allowing actors to walk in front of it or behind it, like our barrel. Against wall will render the tile flat against a wall tile with a collision, like the top portion of a bookcase. Bent will render the bottom half of the tile tall and the top half of the tile flat, meeting at a 90 degree angle and allowing actors to walk on top of it, like the front portion of a table. Lastly, Billboard 3D will force the tile to always face the camera, which is useful for 3D games. The altitude option is used for multi-part tiles that take up more than a single 32x32 32 32 pixel tile. The bottom tile will usually have an altitude of zero, while the upper tile will have its altitude set higher, like 32 for example. This allows you to place the tiles on your map without needing to modify its set position. The scale option is used to increase or decrease the render size of the tile. This is useful for quickly changing the size of your tiles or making them high definition. The collision option allows you to select a predefined collision shape or set your own. Lastly, the shadow distance option is used to set how far shadows will render below the tile. For our barrel tile, the default tile shape of tall and the default collision of cube is appropriate, so we can just leave these as is. Once saved, select the lower objects tab from the tile set picker on your map and then select your new lower object tile set. Then select the barrel tile and place it on your map using the pencil drawing tool. Now let's turn our attention towards upper objects. 
As previously mentioned, upper objects share all of the same properties as lower objects, with the sole exception being that they don't have any collision. Their tile type is also almost always set to against wall, since the majority of upper objects will be placed on top of lower objects, or on walls. Since upper objects share so many of their properties with lower objects, we can repeat our earlier steps to create an upper object tile set, with the one difference being to set its layer to upper object instead of lower object. This time, however, we'll insert a multi part tile. Click on the Add Resource button to create a new tile set, and then set the layer to upper object. Then click and drag inside the tile set window to highlight the first two tiles going down the leftmost column. Then click on the editable selection box and select Replace from the drop down menu. This time, Double One Game Creator will be looking for a graphic that's 32 pixels wide and 64 pixels tall. If we try to insert a graphic with different dimensions than this, we'll receive a size error warning that tells us specifically what Double One Game Creator is looking for. Fortunately, we have a graphic that will fit perfectly. Double click the wall torch.png graphic inside the upper objects folder to insert it into our tile set. The tile shape should be set to against wall by default, which is appropriate. Once saved, select the upper objects tab from the tile set picker on your map, and then select your new upper object tile set. Then click and drag inside the tile set picker to select both of your tiles and place it on your map using the pencil drawing tool. Finally, there's walls, which you'll be using for your buildings and interior spaces. We start the same way we have with our other tile sets. First, click on the Add Resource button to create a new tile set, and then set the layer to Wall. Next, click on the Editable Selection box and select Replace from the drop down menu. Then double click BrickWall.png from the Walls and Roofs folder. Now we need to create a roof tile that will pair with this wall tile. To do this, create a new tile set and make sure the layer is set to Ground. Next, click on the Editable Selection box and select Replace from the drop down menu. Then double click BrickRoof.png from the Walls and Roofs folder. Now return to the Walls tile set we created earlier and click on the default roof button. Click on the Ground button and then select the Roofs tile set we just created. Then select your newly created roof tile and click OK. The only other option that's unique to wall tiles is the Display Shadow checkbox, which will render the wall shadow when ticked. We'll leave this turned on. And with that, we've successfully created a wall tile. Once saved, select the Walls tab from the tile set picker on your map, and then select your new wall tile set. You can then use the slider to the right to adjust the wall height, and place some walls on your map by using the drawing tools underneath. This concludes the third part of our video tutorial series detailing the different types of resources used in Double One Game Creator. In the next part, we'll be continuing our look at tile sets, learning how to create animated tiles, ramps, and custom collisions, as well as learning how the tile set extractor and tile terraformation tools work.